Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll see how to train a graph neural network. Graph neural networks have been gaining popularity these days because a molecule can be represented as a graph and they give pretty good results. In, in this lesson, we'll see uh, what the graph neural networks do, just like we looked at artificial neural networks, and then we'll train a graph neural network. As we discussed earlier, we can represent a molecule as uh, as we discussed earlier, we can represent a molecule uh, in terms of a graph where the atom corresponds to the nodes of the graph and the bonds would correspond to the edge of the graph. We talked about this in, in the representation, molecular representation, and we could represent each of these nodes as a, a, a node feature with atomic number, hybridization, charge, and so on, and bond features like single bonds, number of single bonds, or aromatic, whether the bond is aromatic or not. Usually these uh, features are represented in terms of one-hot encoding, for instance, if we want to represent the hybridization of this atom, all, of all these carbon atoms, which are sp2, we would not just write in sp2. What we would do is we would create a vector of, le uh, of length 3 or dimension 3. And we would say, okay, if, if this atom was sp, uh, we would put a 1 in, in, in the first place and 0 in the other places but this is an sp2 carbon so we would put one in 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 between which would correspond to sp2 and say okay this is the node feature which corresponds to hybridization for this atom and we would represent the other ones like atomic number in the same way so if atomic number is six we would have uh, a big maybe 20 30 or 100 uh, length vector and at atom at position number six we would put in a one and the rest of them would be zero we would be using this representation for uh, graph neural networks the reason uh, people are using graph neural network for molecules is uh, sometimes it's not clear what the vector input for for these uh, simple feed forward networks as they are called or multi-layer perceptrons uh, are so we don't sometimes know what these should be or sometimes if we use the descriptors or feature vectors they need to be of constant size and uh, if we have large diversity in the data set for instance let's say you have a small molecule which just contains two atom and the largest molecule in the data set contains a uh, hundred atom in in that in that case if you uh, put a, a feature vector over here let's say you are using molecular fingerprints and you need a large vector size to accurately represent the big hundred uh, atom molecule so you can say maybe you use a two thousand dimensional uh, fingerprint in that case you you'd be having a lot of information for the big one the big molecule but for the small molecule which has just two atoms most of the uh, elements in the input vector would be zeros and there would be at just two or three places where there would be ones and all maybe 999,000 of them would be zeros and you just put in zeros you may get zeros out and the model doesn't learn a lot and that's where sometimes it's good to have these graph models where you are not limited by fixed size inputs uh, generating a fixed size vector for something and sometimes you don't even know what the features would be so that's where graph neural network helps so you put in a graph representation of a molecule and say okay this is this atom and with these features and this is a bond with whether it's aromatic not aromatic we generate a bunch of features for this and pass it through a graph neural network and the graph neural network would do some operations on it we'll see what those operations are in a while and give us a transformed graph once we have this graph 
uh, the model we believe would learn some something about this and give us a graph which would then be used to predict the values y once we have the graph we can some somehow and uh, extract those features and put it through a simple feed forward network or the prediction layer to give us the output and this is the whole architecture of machine learning model we would have the input and we have a forward pass where your gnn blocks as well as the prediction layer is is uh, is predicting something and then you have a back propagation throughout prediction layer and uh, the other layers uh, the gnn layers so as to get you a very optimized transformed graph for predicting uh, the value y the inner workings of that graph neural network is something like this you have a universal feature you can say okay this is molecules of this weight or something you can have a bunch of features in there and the mlp corresponds to the a multi layer perceptron or the prediction layer kind of thing so you just have a neural network of connected neurons so you can envision the universal features going through that and giving you another set of features and uh, you're not going to do any prediction in this case but it passes through the the network and gives you some updated features you can do that same thing with the vertices or the uh, nodes and you have the node features you remember the the one hot encodings those encodings can be put in and they give us some new encodings and over the over the course of training the the uh, mlps that you see over here which are machine learning models again artificial neural network models in this case and uh, they try to optimize themselves so the output over here the output graph is 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 such that it will be easy to predict the values and the features that you generate from here are optimal for predictions once uh, these things are done you can also link information and this is what uh, one of the ways of uh, graph neural network which is called message passing neural network architecture does it tries to get information from the edges passes on passes it on to the nodes and that information is also some sort in some way embedded into the next uh, representation generated for for the uh, output graph and what this actually looks like is something like here so let's say you have some features for each atom and uh, you you would have the the hybridization the atomic number and so on for each of those atoms and what the message passing would do is it would somehow aggregate the information and let's say we are updating this particular uh, edge in this case so in layer n you would uh, try to aggregate this and pass it to a function that somehow does some operation on this information that it has and gives you a new information and this new information would then be put back into the the node that had those initial vectors so when when we have the initial vectors of uh, uh, node features atom the node features the hybridization and everything that will be updated when we move on from first layer to the second layer so it will no longer be if this was sp2 hybridization it would no longer be 0 1 0 it would have changed to something else which d depends on what this transformation is and also the back propagation which modifies this transformation this transformation function to give you be the best possible uh, feature for this node and once that is done the overall pipeline looks like this you have an input graph goes through the graph neural network blocks and this is where the message passing could happen there are other ways in which you could use the graph neural networks but we would f focus here on the message passing and there's message passing you get a new transformed graph where each of those uh, nodes have different uh, information from the previous input graph that was there and 
we would have to find a way to somehow extract this information. Maybe we could just concatenate all the the atomic numbers or the hybridizations and generate a vector out of it. And once that is done, it passes through the regression layer or the prediction layer to give us the prediction. And this is a, a short overview of uh, how a GNN model is trained. And uh, let's see how to do it in Python.